Righto. Enough's enough. I want a new song. I want a new song for Back Chat. That's the last time that's being played. Do you understand? Uh, nah, I, I I'm nah. sorry. That's that's my thing. I don't care. I'm telling you. All right. We've just well, come back. <laughs> Southern Southern River Band. We've yeah. come in. We've gone out and seen them play. We're having one of their songs on intro. I, I, I don't I don't uh, care. Good luck getting that sorted. <laughs> oh, you, you don't think I can? <laughs> no, I don't think you could. <laughs> I'll see you fucking there. See you next week on Back Chat. That's enough from us, guys. I'm going to go sort this thing out. I need a week to do it. Now, um... Uh, we put uh, uh, we went out to the Southern River Band, saw yes. them play at the Lakers Tavern, their local tavern. It was an all time night. It was a great atmosphere. There was their friends, their family. Cal, the lead singer, who you would have heard here on Back Chat if you've been a fan of this podcast, uh, he had his mum playing with a couple of songs, which was yeah. like, honestly it was fucking awesome. Got his cousin up there, yeah, cousin Shane. But I think Shane's actually um, in the in the band pretty regularly. But just yep. cousin Shane, yeah, it was just unreal. We got some photos at the end of the night. Mm-hmm. How do you? How would you assess your photo taking ability? Uh, the photos okay. taken of you. Yeah, I hate getting photos taken. I hate looking at photos with you in them. Yeah, because so uh, my wife, she like you know, occasionally if we're at like somewhere nice, whatever, she's like, let's get a photo, and I'm, and it's not that I don't want to have a photo with her. I just don't want to take photos. So there was ten photos with Cal, you and I. Yep. Eight of them were good photos of Cal and I. Yep. Uh, one of them especially was a really good photo. I was like, oh, I was like, oh, I look quite yeah. like good. And, you <laughs> Frame know, that with a rock star. <laughs> and then I pan to you. <laughs> you have your eyes closed. Yeah. Your mouth's doing something weird. Mm-hmm. And you're also, which I, this is actually what I have the biggest moment. Maybe you blinked. That's why the eyes shut. Maybe you had something in your teeth. Maybe that's what's happening with your mouth. Why are you doing exactly what Cal is doing? So Cal was doing a finger, almost like a you know, umpire dicky bird giving the, the finger the <laughs> wicket. You're doing the same thing. Not like even like someone's doing a thumbs up and someone's doing a shaka. You're doing exactly the same thing as him. Why? It wasn't like communicated what we were doing, right? And like you said, we had eight to 10 photos. I'm staying there for what feels like in my mind, 20 minutes while someone's taking, I don't, I, I don't want to take one photo. Yeah. Okay. So go to photo. All right, cool. Well, let's go. We're, so do you look at him? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you remember looking at him going, he's doing the finger, I'm going to give the finger? But it's just like I put the finger up. It's not like, oh, we, we were both You must doing have it. looked at him. No, yeah. because You've never done that before in a photo. Before. No, I've, I've never seen it. you do that. When I've won championships No, you haven't. Stuff. No, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we- I literally were there for that long. I was like, yeah, I'll give you. I'll give a finger up too. Overall, like photo etiquette, do you think there's rules around this? Nah. or Do, you think there's, do you whatever just, you want. So why Who are you cares? doing the same things, Cal? No one should care. No one should spend minutes thinking about whether or not I had my finger up because there was eight to 10 other photos where I didn't. And I was like, sure, I'll, I'll give you one of these too. There's been a delayed start on back chat and it's because I've been uh, mulling over for that. For 20 <laughs> minutes. Yeah, well, I've been outraged by it. But if you can check those out on our socials, we had a great time at Southern River. It was Band. very good. Went out to Thornley. Yeah, it was unreal. Yep. We love Thornley, by the way. Yeah. I'll be back there and hopefully they get some more stuff doing. They are touring with the darkness in a couple of weeks. And then I believe, I don't know if this is hush hush, but we'll just announce it here. They're doing a national tour after that. So very I'm good. excited for the boys. They're a great bunch of lads. If you like a bit of rock and roll, um, and laced with a bit of humour, get around the Southern River Band boys. Follow them on their social media or listen to them wherever you get your music. Talking about doing things and following things, and you know what to follow us. Backchat double underscore on Instagram. Um, everything we do is on backchatpodcast.com.au. We're across all social media. Our patrons over at Patreon, we love you. Get discounts to some of our stuff. I reckon we're going to start ramping things up on Patreon. So if you're, not, if you're not a patron member, now would be the time. Otherwise, yeah. you may just fall behind the speed a little bit. Yep. If you don't know what Patreon is, just jump over to backchatpodcast.com.au. See what's over there. we got discounts to all our sponsors, all of our partners here at Backchat. And we've got some bloody great ones. Whippersnapper Whiskey, they were the first on board. They do the best whiskey in the world. Blue Bet, Shelter Brewing Co., some great beers they're spitting out. Margaret River Roasting Co., you get your coffee there. Every lead. day I drink it. Every day I'm drinking it. <laughs> leadable cameras down on Oxford Street with Lydio and the crew. And, of course, Dean Bradley Real Estate. Um, he's over at Ray White now, so he's he's got a big access to a big portfolio yeah. of properties. Probably the only um, the only partner that we have that we probably can't figure a discount code for is Dean Bradley. Is Dean Bradley? But, but what? I, I I don't know what I'm about to offer everyone. Oh, well, what are you going to offer uh, everyone? Free? No, I was going to say uh, we're about to do some activations in the charity space. That's right. Yep. We've got some big announcements on this show around mm-hmm. that. Um, I've got some personal stories to, to speak about my brother a little bit later on. And Dino, and the, the way he's come on board is he's 
he's doubling the money we're raising on fines to put towards charities. It's brilliant. Yeah. So that's why there's no discounts. It's not needed because Dino is putting the money is, towards the charities. That's he's right. A bloody good bloke. Making people better. And yes, he's in. He's he's in real estate. But Mate, uh, uh, real let's estate be second. You good bloke. You first. hit up Dean Bradley and you go massive fan of Backchat. Heard you're doing good things. What can you do? He'll go, I'll come around. We'll have coffee. You know, like that's what, that's the sort of guy Dean is. We love it. He'll do that. All right, let's get into it. Thank you for all of our supporters and sponsors, everything at backchatpodcast.com.au. Um, I want to start on a bit more of a serious note. Yes. Um, Hawthorne, the allegation that have come out of there in the last fortnight, the AFLPA have put together an insights report that has never been released to the public. That has been done for probably the last five to six years as players. Yep. And it's reported internally to each club anonymously. But now it's been released to the public. So it's sort of a bit more, right. oh, yeah, first ever released. It's been done for quite a few, sure. few years. And also, Jordan Degoe sides on as a Collingwood player after not signing for five years due to um, behavioural clauses within his contract. So all of those got me sort of thinking – not just the Hawthorne piece, because I do still think that's an incredibly hard thing to speak of, given that no one, um, other than the people it's happened to and other than people that in that football club know what's happened. I was yeah. a one-club player. I can't speak to what's happened at Hawthorne. Mate, but even I, players who played at Hawthorne for a long time correct. So had no idea. So I just thought to speak on that issue, like I can speak to how a footy club works and I can mm. only speak to how West Coast works, but I would say there are similarities and I, the thing that's prompted me, I've seen a fair bit of coverage around um, uh, through media, of course, about comparing it to similar, uh, comparing it to industries like normal jobs. Right. It's really important to consider with all of this stuff that AFL football and whether that is as a player or as support staff or coaches or running football clubs, it's a very unique industry. Um there's a short sh- uh, shelf life for players. Um, the demands on performance are, are high. They are the, the the highest, elitist in the country in terms of performance and what's required of you as an employee. That everyone gets to watch as it's well. The, the, yeah, and then there's the public nature of it, mm. right? And there is interest not only as, a, as a, what you do with, for your job, yep. but – not as your job. Yep. Away from the, everything. How he handles yourself. There's no privacy. Out and about. Right. Whatever. And that's why there's big money. And that's why mm-hmm. we, we, we know all that. But there's no, there's, there's it's really hard to compare to uh, medicine or law or accounting or uh, gardening or I, I think military could be, could be a decent comparison with how it's actually set up within a football club. Right. Not the discipline element, but the teamwork element, the requirement yep. For immediate feedback, the requirement to be right and to get it right and to perform. Yep. They're life or death, military. Because if you don't, yeah, that's right. But, so that's not, that's yeah. not, yep, yep, but yep. you get the concept right. Yes. So when you see head coaches and the roles of them with players, I, I just think it's important. It's, it's a unique industry. There's, you can't compare it to, to anything. Oh, well, um, okay. So again, using Hawthorne, well, this has happened here. Um, uh, yeah, can we, yeah, you know, how, how does it happen there? And and it, you know, if I saw that in office, like no one would have jobs. It, yeah, it can't be be compared. Bad things that happen also can't be excused. So of course. yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's you know again, don't want to get into that, but it's just it needs to be held as a unique industry. So you know the the role of coaches. You hear a lot of players speak about a head coach as a father, as a father yeah, figure. Totally. And that's because it's not – a coach doesn't just coach you on the football field and see you once a week for training. They're there all day, every day. And what happens off the football field for coaches directly impacts selection, which is your job. That's right. So if you are unfit, yep, um, that impacts your job. If you have relationship issues and you're coming to the football club and not performing, your job is to perform and win. As, mm-hmm. a, as a player and your, your welfare is important just like everyone in any workplace but more so than other workplaces this is why it's unique if you're not in the right mental state if you're not in the right physical state you can't do your job and so if you can't sort that out yourself someone's going to help you mm-hmm. and, and quite often in my personal experience it's been the football club I've been through things in my life whether that be dealing with loss whether that be physical elements whether that be mental elements where I haven't been in a position to perform how I should and the football club intervened or helped or did whatever. And I've seen it across other players as well. 
And that's why football clubs get involved because your job is to perform and unlike other jobs, your mental and physical shape like directly impact what you can do. Yep. If you're just if you're drinking too many beers as an accountant or as a gardener, as a easy example, yeah, I mean it, it might impact it, but it, you're not going to get sacked one week because mm. of it. Probably you will I, at footy I, club. I actually, You'll get dropped. I actually had a boss once. And our receptionist used to go hard on the weekends and she'd come in dusty on Monday morning. Yes. My boss said to her, I can't control what you do on the weekends. I'm not, you know, but if you come in on Monday morning like this all the time, you probably need a change. And yeah. he actually said, you can't, you can't be doing that on the Sunday right before work. Right. And that, but, I, but that was, I was, I was, at the time I was like, okay, that's well, crazy. You okay. So I'm thinking that I'm like, that conversation happens every Monday at, at, yeah, at yeah. football clubs. Yeah. You come in dusty and you you likely get dropped and you don't play and then you, yep. you lose your job like immediately. And so, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying here other than like the role of the coach and football teams is very different to anything else in, in society and, and in, in life. So yep. um, it's important to consider that. It's going to be interesting to see what plays out at Hawthorne. But overall, you know, you see Jordan Degoe's, um behavioural clauses. Like that's him as a person. I'd love to actually see what – that yeah. clause is. Well, like, no, get effectively it was pretty much reported that it was effectively a sign the contract. Um, yep. Behavioral clauses are in every contract. Do you know this? Yes. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. in every standard contract, there are behavioral clauses and there are fines attached with it if you do this. Yep. Uh, there's suspensions and then you can get delisted and you can lose your contract. Like yeah. It's not like players just get to do whatever they want. There, There is built-in behavioral clauses in every standard contract. But Collingwood added, and you know what? At any time in the next five years, we can just screw this up whenever we feel like it. Pretty much. They were like, it doesn't really matter what you do. If you stuff up badly enough and we, we think it's bad enough, yeah, it's, our call. it's going in the bin. Mm-hmm. Which some people might say, well, fair enough. They're paying the money. Just behave yeah. yourself, right? Yeah. But if you look at it from a person point of view, would, would you sign a contract like that uh, with a, a job? And, and I know that's not relevant to you. You haven't been stuffing up in the past. But if a part of the job said, whenever we feel like it, with no notice, we can just put you in the bin. Yeah, I, I mean, I, no, I, you'd back yourself in to behave yourself. Yeah, I would. I okay, would. so what happens if an accident happens and uh, you didn't mean it, and uh, but it just looked bad on the company? They said, you know what, mate, see you later. Yeah, look, that's a scary thing to commit to, one hundred percent. Okay, yeah, that's my there that's my go. hard hidden stuff off the top of the things. So that's what yeah, I talk about. Go hard, go early. Now let's get back into content that we're really here for: mm-hmm. cheating. Cheating. There, What's going on in the world of sport? There is so right much cheating happening right now. We what, touched what are you on, talking about? So we touched on it a little bit last week. Someone sent us an email um, about the chess um, ske- ske- chess cheating scandal. Mm. It's a hard phrase. What's up, Skate? What's up, Skate? Um, Hans Nyman, probably saying that wrong, and Carl's, Carl um, Magnuson. Uh, uh, Mag- Magnus Carlson. Magnus Carlson, there you go. I'm thinking of um, Magnuson, who drives a horse. Yes. Um, Magnus Carlson and uh, this young and up-and-comer Hans played in a tournament in chess in chess sorry just clear yeah, this up a, bit. a little while ago right okay. and hans beat him and and carlson has been the best for magnus about, carlson is the chris judd gary ablett yes lance franklin for a long time and i think he's recorded the highest level ever in chess right whatever, whatever. so knows. he's he's a big dog mm. he lost to this um, new up-and-comer and then he lost to in a, in a tournament charlie Exactly. <laughs> um, and then about- Charlie's penalty. Yeah, hey, Charlie. hey Charlie. Charlie's finally back. Yeah, um, back. <laughs> um, a couple of weeks later, they, re- they had a rematch. And this one wasn't in a tournament. And like I said last week, um, Hans played one move. Yes. And uh, Carlson withdrew from the game. He was like, no, nah, not playing. <laughs> so he's- Imagine the eyes the bloke was given to him. Like <laughs> That's right. Yeah, anyway. So um, Hans has been- called a cheater essentially um, by Carlson and uh, there's been reports that perhaps like they're trying to figure out how do you cheat like how do you cheat in chess like because well, that was, apparently he was getting vibrations to his feet or something vibrations wasn't, his he, feet wasn't he wearing anal like beads that. that's another thing that has been out that he was potentially wearing something in his butt that was vibrating telling him um, yeah, remote controlled anal beds. Exactly, yeah. On mm. on moves to make because they can Boy. a computer can figure out how to beat a, a player essentially. Yeah. So using that. Wow. So now um, there's there's allegations and he's basically at first he's like I'm not going to say anything like I'm not going to call him a cheater but this is sus like he's just putting it out there but now he's like no nah, he cheated like we need to look into this. Right. Um, the the thing with uh, Hans is that he said that look I I haven't 
cheated this time. He had cheated in the past, and that has he sort of grown and oh, become has a he? better hey player on. since then. Hey on, yeah, he cheated in online chess in, in his past, but he's grown up now. He hasn't right. done. He doesn't do it anymore. Mm. So he said, "I will play naked if you'd like." Look, to prove that I have nothing on me, I'll play completely starkers. Right. Um, obviously, that's not going to happen because I, I, I think chess I is a little this, above that. Nah, I love but, where this is going. Um, a porn site has reached out and offered him $1 million to Great. do this, um, to, to play nude. Great. So that's happening in chess. Whether or not that match goes ahead, Great. who knows? Oh, it'll be the first game of chess I watch. But Naked man <laughs> wearing <laughs> anal beads. <laughs> plays world champion. Yeah, that's a great caption for the headline. <laughs> so we go from chess, right. a, a team, a, a sport that I don't really ever follow, no. to poker, mm. another sport that I don't really follow. But you, you'd like to dabble in in what in you get interested in poker, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, well, love yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I don't love it. No. Okay, so you, you, you I've watched games. You've watched poker. games of poker and you find it interesting. Yes. Whereas I watch games of poker because it's like three a.m. and it's you know World Poker Tour is on and right. I've got nothing else to watch. Um, Gar- Garrett Alderstein or Alderstein, another champion poker player. Mm. Like he's at the top of his game, been in the industry for 20 years. He came up against Robbie Jade Lou. That's a, that's a nice name. So they're playing at this table. He goes all in on this hand. Um, Lou. Garrett. Garrett. Garrett is the man. Jade, uh, Robbie Jade is is this girl. And How's a girl? Yep. Oh. So he goes all in on this hand, right? right? And she goes and calls and, and she goes all in as well. And he um, is a little surprised by her move because he's like sort of weird. And that unfolds and she um, wins the hand right. and cleans him out of the, he gets booted from- She the, got she got lucky with the flop basically. Yeah. I've seen this. So what he's come out and said, he, he after after the hand fully comes out and, and uh, she wins, he's like, wait, I'm so confused. Like he, you, the look on his face is in utter shock. He can't believe it that he's just lost. And- um, He's come out afterwards and said, I've reviewed hours of her playing. This goes against everything she ever does. All of her um, f- um, patterns on like when she raises, when she folds, all of that. This is completely abnormal. And um, he called her out. They went for a little walk after he got taken and um, accused her of cheating. Like you're cheating somehow. And she offered his money back. So I think whatever money he uh, she won from him, she goes like, "I didn't cheat, but if this will make you happy, I'll give you money." So he's that come out and seems got, like the actions of a cheater. That so he's gone out and said, "Well, look, that for me is basically a mission of guilt." So, yeah, absolutely, it is. So I now, want the world champs got side. Now, um, now she's going to play him naked. No, <laughs> no. I mean, so the the funny thing is, is that potentially what they're saying is that has happened is that she is also wearing some sort of vibrating device. So because it was a live streamed oh, tournament. Earth, Earth is going, yes. Because it was a live streamed tournament, she could get like a little buzz when she was told you've got the best hand and don't don't fold. Don't like tell me go. it was the beads as well. But so there was like a zoomed in thing on her right pocket that people reckon moved ever so slightly when she went in. And um, so that's just another cheating scam. Okay. So that's poker. Don't say, don't We're going to move on to another sport. Yes. Fishing. <laughs> Another sport that I'm not interested whatsoever, but all of a sudden I'm reading everything I can about fishing. Chase Kaminsky, right? And Jake Runyon. Who's the world champion? They're duos. They win a lot of tournaments. Last year they won 156,000 at this tournament. How do you win a fishing tournament? Wait. That's important. Uh, so the, the the catch, as in heaviest catch. I, I'm waiting for you to tell me. No, no <laughs> good. W e i g h t. Weight. Uh, the weight of the fish. Uh, so they have um, in this tournament. This just happened last weekend. Don't tell me. They've won. Right? Don't tell me. Vi- vibrating. vibrating. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, they've they've got the heaviest catch. But then the um, the tournament director, who I don't know, this was interesting in the article as well. He's also a police officer. Um, he <laughs> approaches undercover. them and cuts open their fish, only to find uh, sinkers like lead weights. Cal Sinclair. Oh. Lead weights. <laughs> Cal Sinclair. Sinkers <laughs> is in there. So lead weights. He finds one and he's like, "You're." He goes, "You're out of here." Oh, is this like, video? There's video of it happening. Oh so you go God. back, watch it. It's phenomenal. It's just like um, the classic fisherman crew. Like there's a there's a little crowd that gathers, then people are going, he should be sent to jail and like <laughs> get him. Like all this crowd is so angry. Lynch mob. Lynch full lynch mob. So he pulls out one weight, pulls out another weight, pulls out another weight, and they are fuming. People are screaming. They pull out 
um, fish fillets. <laughs> Extra just cut up fish fillets that they... Fish fillets? S- yes, in the fish. So there's... Um, fish fillets, which the guy like- Like crumbed? <laughs> no, <laughs> battered. <laughs> no, these like raw fish fillets. They've slid so into like the fish. So killed another fish, yeah. filleted it, and then put it- Fill, Filled the fish up. Why would they actually just put the- well, Yeah, because they fitted the mouth as well. Yeah, so- Oh, this is incredible. More, more cheating Plus, happening in the world of fishing. So fishing Twitter is gone berserk, which I didn't even know was a <laughs> thing until <laughs> recently. And so- um, this stuff doesn't happen in the AFL. No, it doesn't. I was going to ask you if you'd, if you'd, I mean, other than back uh, front well, office type stuff. Oh well, yeah, you know, Essendon supplement saga, uh, Carlton salary cap breaching. Yep. Um, Someone was filming practices. Yeah, I think. Was <laughs> that Essendon? There's a big malt house in the stand with these like transition lenses. Something like, <laughs> just, like, something like Dave Singer there. there. Yep. Uh, there was a couple of brothers, Talia, Talia brothers, perhaps, in, like exchanging yep. selection notes. Right. None of that's really cheating. You can't cheat on a footy field. I mean, honestly, I've said this before, like it should just be open training all the time. Release the teams like as normal. Like you can't, you're not going to learn it. Nothing's going to happen by knowing. You don't think you can win a game from that, right? No, no. no, no. You got to adjust your game plan a bit, but. It doesn't matter. That doesn't, that's not what wins and loses games. But like, you know, has there been players to let a player kick the first goal? Not oh that, yeah, not gambling. That, that, I guess gambling. That, that was always an example used by gambling um, presentations we'd have every year. Yep. So you do you do anti gambling, mm-hmm. you know, like anti laundering. Um, you know, yep. uh, uh, racism that's that's relevant at the moment. Respect yep. of women. You know, do a lot of those sorts of things. And the gambling ones. Well, the example was always used like first goal mm-hmm. because it's you know in cricket that's where some of the match fixing had come from. Yeah. Um, no ball on this Wides. particular ball. Yep. Um, you know, wicket throwing away wickets, that sort of stuff, or yep. you know, not not trying to get wickets. So, not that I've ever heard, which is a good thing. Yeah, but I, I, I tell you what, fishing, chess, and poker is in the yeah. fucking bin at the moment. I um I remember uh, the presentation I had when I was working at the Wildcats when these the betting yeah. people came in, um, and they basically said, you know, don't don't bet, it's a criminal offence, and even like um betting on the fly, because because what happens if if you're at a game, um, they also taught us like how to spot people live betting at a game which is apparently it's a sort of illegal in some way because the betting companies are getting information like you know you can bet on the fly for a win or whatever yeah but if you're at the game and like there's an over or under that you can quickly go on right as as something's happening that's apparently sus you can be like there's people that have been caught in the past like feeding information to gamblers who are at the game purely if they can go like bryce cotton just scored and then you could, it helps them make a, a bet on the fly, like right. really quickly before the betting agencies get a chance to update it on their apps or whatever. Right. But I remember them coming in and going, um, "Just so you know, like they put a mug shop, up. We they put a mug shop, up and it looked like <laughs> no, we know everyone here who's betting. Like, there's no way to hide it. We know who you are, so yeah. don't do it. And it was very um, confronting. And I, I, well, like, I don't think I would. I don't think I'd bet it on um, because we, we were told don't bet on NBL. Yeah, but like in the NBL, is it like don't bet, but like it's only if you get caught. Like in the AFL, like no one bets. You, you well, you're allowed, allowed to, it, you're allowed allowed to, to bet, bet on AFL and stuff yeah. like that. You just can't bet on basketball. So yeah, if you've got it's to, the same in AFL. But yeah. like it's that that warning that they give, they know if you are betting because if you're- I reckon it was just a scare because yeah. there would have been people in there that have gone like, oh man, I didn't even realize. But like there was no one in there that I think, you know, people that I Dan knew that were brings down the Perth like, <laughs> No, it was not malicious like- Gambling. <laughs> yeah, but if you're like, I don't know. So it is, it's a, it's a thing. Well, there you go. They, I absolutely Scandalous love, behavior. I love, I love the updates. It's bloody great. Um, let's keep moving on. Ben Rutten's uh, uh, body was used for a, um, <laughs> is it Brad or Chris? This is going to really confuse me. It's Brad. Brad Scott. I can't believe they both played on the same team. Brad Scott, his head is- on Ben Rutten's uh, head. It's so the, obvious. It, which is very good. Um, uh, and talking about same team, it's yeah. a lovely segue. Yes. Seven of the 18 AFL senior coaches next season mm-hmm. played in the 2004 AFL grand final. So they are Brad and Chris Scott, uh, Kent, uh, not Kent Kingsley, Adam Kingsley. What's his name? Kingsley. Adam Kingsley? And that's right, Charlie? isn't it? I think so. He's, well, he's, playing, so. <laughs> he's, he's coaching GWS. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be really annoyed if his name's not Adam. I'm pretty sure it is. Thank you, Charlie. I'm going to Google it. Uh, Stuart Dew. Yep. Michael Voss. Yep. Craig McRae. 
Damien Hardwick. So those seven played in the 2004 grand final between Port Adelaide and Brisbane. Another uh, eight or nine assistant coaches played in that game too. So uh, Lepic, Carousella, Lappin, Power, Schofield, Montgomery, Carr, Laid, and Brogan, all assistant coaches. That That's unbelievable. One, that two, is. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 17 players are now coaches from that game. From that one game. That's outrageous. And and you, it's fair to say that probably some of those assistants will go on to coach at some point. Yeah, well, I mean, Justin Lepich has been a, a senior yep, coach. Yep. Um, just looking at the others. Carr has been um, muted as a potential senior People coach. People like Schofield. He's coached uh, multiple Waffle premierships. Yep. Jared Schofield. So I'll tell you what. Your cousin? No relation. So Southern River Band, Lakers... Some lady, lovely lady, um, middle aged, came up, gave him a big hug. Scully, love you. I love you. Twenty eighteen yeah. friendship. Thank I think, you so I think much. I photo. I just thanks so much, Jared. We just love it so much. Oh no, they have. It was regular occurrence. Jared. Yeah, Jared. Jared's a regular occurrence. So that's Good. that's Jared. Anyway. Okay. So um, I just thought it was a nice little tidbit. We had uh, we had one of our um, very very good fans. Um, across the way uh now i've lost his name kane kane williams is that correct kane williams kane william the, kane. Uh, it says kane william on the screen but kano you've done a <laughs> bloody good job last week we asked we talked about the number one draft pick and whether or mm. not like teams would be tanking to get the number one draft pick yes because i think you sort of said you like i'm not verbatim here but you said something like i would i would I would probably say that there would be more number one draft pick busts than yeah. number two. Yeah, and I said that out of my ass, like most things I say. But I agree. I When you said it, it sounded very real. Kano's gone back, looked at the last <laughs> 22 years, and he's put them all together. We're not going to go through everyone, but we do appreciate it, Kano. He's come out to his, his uh, uh, look at it all is 12 of the last 20 first draft picks are yep. better than the second. So 12... First round draft picks are the best. Eight are second round, second so you're number, not, number you're two not far draft off. pick. Yeah. I, I raised the question, though, off the back of Kano's great research. It would be m- more interesting, or uh, you know, just as interesting, Kane, but if you did want to spend some more time on it, that'd be great. Mm. First draft pick compared to the best draft pick in the draft. Yes. My, dra- my draft, for instance, Bryce Gibb, number one draft pick. Mm-hmm. Bryce Gibbs, great player, had a good career. Solid. Joel Selwood's probably the best player that come out of the draft. Tom Hawkins was in it too, but Joel Selwood's probably going to be the player. Yep. So he, he went at seven. Okay. Right? So there's um, like a six-point differential there. We looked at the 2013. I'm pretty sure we looked at 2013. Was that right? There was a few that we did look at. Charlie, what 20, was, what? No, we looked, at, we looked at 2013, and Patrick Cripps was oh, probably, right. probably the best out of that with a Brownlow medal. What year was um, Lockie Neal? can't remember what year. I know he was taken you know, mid-50s or something. So, really? Yeah. So Lockie Neal was he? probably mm-hmm. the best player of his draft class. You don't even know what draft it is. Because you deleted them all. They're not even on the run sheet anymore. Well, Lockie Neal's not even on that list because of um, oh, yes. he's that far up. Can you check when he was drafted, please, Charlie? That'd be great. It's just a really interesting conversation. Number is 58 in the, 2011. The best. So 2011. So who was the number one draft pick in 2011? I'm just bringing that up I deleted now. that one. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Patton. Well, he's better than him. I can yeah. tell you that right now. The first five picks in that draft were GWS, GWS though. All of them. Oh. Yeah. Do you have them there? Yep. Uh, Jonathan Patton, Canelio. Mm, good player. Neil yeah. Better. Dom Tyson. Not that good. Hoskin Elliott. Nah, he's had a uh, yeah, decent career, two clubs. Matt Bunteen. Hasn't had the terrific career. So not locking Neil's in front of those five players. Yeah. I think that's an inter- interesting conversation. Give us an average number of picks differential between the best player and the number one pick. Yeah, if you'd like, It's Kane. a bit of a like, you're telling me there's a chance type thing for clubs that don't have the number one pick. Of course. Like you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah, happens, in, happens in all sports. So like, who cares about the number one pick? Yeah. I, I would... And, and what drafts is the number one pick the best player in the draft? That's also a good... Mate. Let's go, he's on today. You, this is an article for you to write on code. Ooh. With a bit of with uh, a bit of research, I don't know if I have it in me. Okay, um, a little bit of research is the troubling thing for mine. Now let's get into this one, Charlie. Let's see how you've been away from the desk for a long time, but now it's time for this. We oh, nailed it. You said it. We read it. Volume was a bit low. No, nah, but 
Like I feel like he didn't even need the slow intro from me. Yeah, I think he yeah, knew he what was, was going on. Yeah, he was there before we were there. I did you a lot of checks to see what button that was <laughs> beforehand. <laughs> okay, good. I knew we were going to throw him into the bus. Uh, you sent it. We ran it by Leadable Cameras. That's right. The legends down on Oxford Street in Leadable. Uh, Lydio and the crew down there. They'll look after you with anything you need. Cameras, mics. Talking about things that like look after you with. I don't know if you're watching this on YouTube, but if you are, yeah, you might notice. Yeah, we're using these fancy schmancy arms. Yes. It's almost like we could attach... Imagine if we attach them to the roof. Yeah, that's the next level. Um, we, we Everything we use for this podcast, and we're starting to bring some um, maybe some other podcasts on. I don't know if I can just maybe... Yeah, you go on. Just a little little, little tease. You can just do it. I, it. It makes it real. Dan Const is starting an NBA, NBL podcast... Yep. This week. It's the Backchat Basketball Show. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Well, I love that. Uh, starts, I have nothing to do with it. No. So we're recording uh, Wednesday. It'll probably come out Wednesday night, Thursday morning. So we're doing that on our third set that we have down here yes. at Backchat Studios. And me and, this, me and uh, Ben, yes. um, Ben Malice, he's uh, been around the world basically reporting on basketball. He's in Perth now. Um, not Perth now. He's in Perth hmm currently just doing stuff yeah and uh we're gonna be recording on wednesday it'll be on its own feed so you have to search like backchat basketball show it's not gonna just it will come up on youtube but we'll, we'll still put it through our, our own youtube but um if you like basketball i'd probably head over there yeah nbl season's about to start yep. nba season's about to start um basketball world cups just wrapped Don't up you have a guest first up like a good one um, like a potential just, potential okay Potential, potential guests um, big guest. will, will join us for a bit, and Huge so guest. it's not going to be. It's not. Um, it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be an over overview of basketball in general. We're not going to be doing like week by week analysis of games. We'll do a little bit of that, but there's a lot of that out there already. Back to our basketball, baby. Yeah, back to our basketball show. That's there unreal. I'm excited. Mm. I'm actually excited. Yeah, I don't know if you like. No, it's going to be good. I, I, I feel like if I, if I announce like I'm going to do this thing, you'd be like. I'm excited. <laughs> well, I'm excited. I have bloody good. No, job, it's mate. good. It's gonna be good. You're growing all growing up. I have your own <laughs> podcast. Um, your second podcast. We're doing that on our other studio here in Backchat Studio. So yeah. we've got enough equipment in here that we've all got from leadable cameras. Yep. To get this sort of stuff happening. So we more podcasts coming into the network. Excited to announce that. Sorry, I threw that into you, Dano, but no, Dano, I've never called you Dano Love in my it. life. But see, just, sometimes you just put the finger up because you don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there if I go. ever put a finger up in a photo, please find I'm going to find a photo of I, you with I a finger I think I'm up. doing it in the GF photo, to be Yeah, of course you would. That's the best thing. That's like the best opportunity to do That's it. what we're comparing it to. <laughs> <laughs> the Lakers. All right, right, let's go. Let's, let's read some emails. If you head down to uh, Leadable Cameras and you say Scoey sent you, you get 20 bucks off whatever yeah. you're buying. Put so, a finger up. I don't know. Yeah, if you put a finger up, <laughs> if you put a finger up. And say Scoey sent you. And say Scoey sent you. I will personally... I'll put another 20. It's $40 off. I'll add Brilliant. another 20. Me out of my own pocket. Yep. If you can get a photo of you raising with the Lydia. finger with Lydio, <laughs> buying something at Leadable yep. Cameras, Oxford Street, get down there, sort them out. If you send something to us on this uh, segment, uh, it is hello at backchatpodcast.com.au is the email. We what will do, read it. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> very, everyone's on other than me today. Um, this is from Rainbow Skull. <laughs> hey, boys, big fan of the podcast. I do a pre-workout podcast called A Skull with Rainbows Coming Out of the Eye Sockets. What? Catchy Sorry. and easy to remember name. I know. <laughs> I've tried so many pre-workouts and really struggle to find that next level when I'm working out if my face isn't melting off. Yes. Skoey, when you were playing, did you ever take pre-workout before a session or a game? Is it something that the docs allow? I've heard of players taking no-dos before a game, but why not go all in on some pre-workout? Thanks, Rainbow Skull. Um, there, there was stages like pre-workouts, like a bit of a, a bit of powder you put into um, a, a shaker, a little bit like what? Little, what? Little, what? little bit, little little bit like the protein shakes you roll in here with, mate. No, it goes into a you know, yeah, you yeah, shaker. Your, you, yeah, you put well, your protein into it. Protein, shakers. a bit of. I don't know, it gets bit energetic, bit of bit of whey, bit of <laughs> bit of whatever, and it just gets you up and about. Yeah, there was stages where guys were using it, but probably early days. Um, the guys that are running the regime now don't use it, no, and no one does. I, I would say that <clears throat> the athletes at that level probably don't need pre-workout. Um, no, no, it's not that. Is it at, not that? At all. It's it's more you're not just going to the gym and, and doing weights. You, yeah, you come, sure. You're coming off the back of uh, a running session, cardio sessions. Yep. Um, the, the, the way that AFL bodies are built, um, that's why. Sure, okay. Um, yeah. Good question though. Uh, this is from Anon, back chat. 
Uh, hey guys, not sure if this is news news or if this is the right place to send this, this but here we go. Anonymous email. This here is we from go. very close to Griffin. Very close. His contract offer to go to North Melbourne is huge, but now he's hesitant and his decision is pending as he waits on the Clarko verdict. Hope this is a good talking point. Anonymous source. <sighs> a very source to Griffin. <laughs> I mean, could it be Griffin Logue writing that? <laughs> it could be. Like, seriously. He's been on the show. He knows our email. Wow. He's finished sixth in the best and fairest. Very good. Fremantle will lose their sixth place and their tenth place. Charlie, how do you feel about that, mate? I mean, I should have brought you in earlier on the show. I'm sorry. How was the grand final? Oh, it was ac- absolutely excellent. Right, I've got to say. Robbie you, Williams was. You saved your best till bloody like You should have got him on roaming. Um, you saved your best <laughs> till uh, last. Roaming back chat was very good stuff over the grand final. Thank you. Thank you very um, much. You got, you got in. You didn't have a ticket. How did you get in? Mark Redding's had one. Why don't you get one off him? Oh, I had one before Mark gave his away. I, I managed to get one on, on, I think it was Thursday night I got one. Just, right. just worked the contacts bit. Did you pay up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I paid for it. Oh, I thought yeah. it just sounded like it was like yeah. a bit I, of a no, I, I actually don't think he paid up that much. Like, you okay. did pay a lot. No, I got it I got it as, at, with a pretty good deal. Okay. You, well what, can you, well, you don't, Who were you going for? Do you have a scarf on? You, you usually buy a scarf. Of- I, had a, I had both scarves already, so I chucked on the Geelong one. Of course it, you did. Yeah. yeah um, sounds like something. Wait, wait, <laughs> Charlie, can you just tell us how much you pay for it or you don't want people to know? No, no, no I'll put it out there. Okay. $435. That's good. That's very good. Yeah, yeah. That's face value. Yeah. Yeah. That's face value. And you had good seats. Very good seats. 435 is literally face value. Got that's to, what they cost. Got to have a chat to Yeah, yeah, but given that people are paying through yeah. the nose, that's yeah. very good. Friend of the show, Brad Shepard. I did see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he recognise you? He did. He came up to me. Holy <laughs> shit. What do you mean? <laughs> Oh, I was sitting down. Um, uh, there was Just mind my own business. Wa- there was kind of a walkway behind me, and Brad Shepherd. He's walking up, and, he, <laughs> and I Brad Shepherd. <laughs> I kind of turn around, and he goes, "Hey, mate, did you say hey. Brad Shepherd to him?" Do you no, go, hello, Brad Shepard. No, I you're said. in no place to be critiquing. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, uh, what, what are they called? Uh, ah, my brain's not working. Go on. Okay, Nuffies. so you saw you saw Brad Shepherd. Saw yep. Brad Shepherd. Had a good chat to him. He said he said he loved what what I was doing with roaming back chat. Oh, he did. It. That's no word of a lie. Before Very you, good. before you mention roaming back chat, I yeah. didn't. I didn't bring it up. Holy shit! Oh, you may be. You might. You might be made. I think. Yeah. Any, fr- any Fremantle players do that to you, mate? Nah, but David Mundy top. was standing right behind me at one point. Did didn't recognise me. Well, no. there you go. <laughs> I think we should get um Shep back on just for back chat. Okay, done. just to confirm that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. just to confirm that. Good day, Chef. Did you recognise Charlie? Yes. Bye bye. Uh, uh, so North Melbourne, Griffin Logue. Yep. There you go. Nothing else to say. Elliot Claxton, lads. As a Richmond supporter, I just listened to your podcast with Richo and Nath Broad, and bloody love them. Surely next up is Liam Baker, still a backman deep down. West Australian. Yeah. Okay. Love it. Now on to the important shit. Yes. During your podcast, I heard your merch for Backman only. And as a solid Backman for over 250 games in country SA footy yeah. with a total of three goals kicked, yeah. I need the, it's the midfield, it's yeah. the midfielder's fault. Oh my God. So when I went to buy one and saw they were sold out, it hurt me. Um, more than seeing my opponent getting an easy goal over the back after I went in for the hardball. <laughs> Any chance you got more merch coming during the cricket and horse racing season so I can stock up? Keep up the good work and remember Backman win premierships. Cheers, Burger. Burger, that might be Huge. my most, yeah, might be my most favourite. You sent it, we read it for a long time, mate. Thank you for sending that in. Big fan of Burger. <sighs> Love the Burger, just not Philo Fishers. Now uh, we are looking at the, the merch is depleted. We need to do another. We need to do another, do another merch run. Yep. I'm, I'm wearing my Southern River merch right now. We got this out at Lakers Tavern. Yep. Very good stuff. I think we need to do another run, and I think we need to keep pushing the backman stuff. Yeah, yeah back woman good. as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe stuff, stuff for girls. Maybe some back children. Yeah, right. Youth, the extra smalls. Yeah, all right. Burger. When when it's out, keep listening. Oh, you'll be the first to know. And because it sounds like he's a backman. Yeah, yeah, a real backman. Three goals over two fifty games. That's good. Benny's. Uh, just, re- just re- sorry, just real quick. Okay. I'm curious also, Burger, to know how Elliot Claxton gets the nickname Burger. Thank you, Burger. I look forward to your email <laughs> next week. Uh, ben, uh, about the Southern River Band. What's up, Scoey and Dan? Had the honour to see the world-famous Southern River Band at Lakers Tavern. Yeah. Me and my mates, Michael and Wade, are big fans of being gozzy boy, being gozzy boys and all. Was a cracker gig. Me Puzzles. and Mike are big. Yep, me and Mike are big Eagles fans, and maybe bigger fans of back chat. Good. Halfway through the gig, we noticed this tall bastard. We both <laughs> look at each other at the same time and say, "That's fucking Will, isn't it?" <laughs> now, being about ten shelters deep, had to say good day. And the only thing I could think um, I could say was something along the lines of "fuck to goey." 
So my apologies. <laughs> I remember this play. <laughs> my apologies. I was a bit starstruck. Not many people with their own Wikipedia page venture to Thornley. Um, love your work. Showing the love to the SRB. Under, uh, hashtag underscore keep up the good work. Oh, I'll tell you what, we've had a couple of back to back very good emails there. Yeah. I, a few things I'd like to highlight there. I think this should be a bit of merch. Not many people with their own Wikipedia page venture to Thornley. That should be a <laughs> t shirt for the th- Southern River. So I do remember um, Ben, I think, he came up to me and not only did he just say fuck to Goey, he started patting my pockets. Right. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> he's like, John to Goey's still in there, mate. He's still, <laughs> oh, he's still got him in the back pocket. Tell you what, very good, Benny. It was a great gig. We enjoyed it. We loved it. Blue bet, no bets this week. No, we have. We did have the break. Um, end yep. of AFL men's. Yep. Um, we're gonna AFL get women's. S- I think we're gonna. I'm gonna put a little bit of money around that. Yeah, we'll have to. Um, we'll have to get around yep. it. Um, but there is other sports as well coming up. Yep. Um, which blue bet doesn't just do footy. Cricket, cricket, World Cup, cricket, soccer, World Cup. Yep. Olympics is about a couple of years away. NFL. Mm, NFL. Now mm-hmm. we're talking. You know NFL. So I, I'm could, I could actually do an NFL podcast, but I'm, I'm a bit busy. Uh, so anyway, Blue Bat, we love you. We'll be back. We'll be back yeah. to clean you out. Uh, what about some fines? Thanks to Dean Bradley, local real estate man, inner western suburbs. He's working with Ray White at the moment. Dean Bradley, you want to get in touch with him on socials, Dean Bradley underscore Ray White or deanbradley.com. He's got his bloody own email address. I mean, uh, <laughs> a website. Of course, he's got, own, <laughs> he's got an email address. Huge. He's got his own website. Yeah. Good stuff. Do you have a Will Oh, that's right. I asked you before. Willscofield.com? Yeah, no one's no one's taken it yet. Shh. Shh. I, no, I don't. If someone wants it, go for it. I, I don't think I'm ever going to get to the stage I need that. Okay. Unless we become like managers of the Southern River Band and take over the podcasting world. And then okay. I still will be back chat. It's yeah. Not, it's not really about me. No. Unless I like break a world record or something. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> for, fines. I'm feeling fine. Now- had a bit of a wide-ranging show today. Let me pass you the gavel. It's been fine. Because I don't get to touch it. I'm not going to kick things off just yet. I'm going to just do a bit of okay, a... Okay, well, I'll hold the gavel to No, it. you don't get to hold the gavel. Okay. You're not, you don't get to do that. I'm sorry. Um, this is the Fines Master's gavel. I want to speak about what Fines is about, right? So so we have a bit of fun with this. Fines is a traditional footy team fine session where I used to be Fines Master. I bring that... We bring that to you guys where you can... Um, find whoever you like. You want to find yourself. You want to find members yep. of this podcast. You want to find other people. You put the fines. We'll put the money up. We'll give it to charity at the end of the year. We'll do some activations around them. At the moment, our um, our charities are Men's Talk, Sabre, and Soccer to Sarcoma, which are all Perth-based charities. But I've got a new one to add to the list, and this is a personal one. Um, uh, so, so this is, uh, not off the back of something that happened this week, but Joel Selwood retired and I put a, a social video up about him. Um, and he'd organized a footy jumper for my brother who was at the start or not started this year, a little while ago, diagnosed with, um, acute myeloid leukemia, so, which is a, an aggressive and rare cancer. Um, it's a blood cancer and, I won't go too far into detail, uh, I guess, how you come out the other side of that. Um, there is hope for Jace, and my brother's name is Jace, so um, it wasn't a, it wasn't a uh, diagnosis. We gave him no hope, but he's got a fair fight in his hand, so he's currently in hospital in Melbourne. He listens to Back Chat every week, so what's up, Jace? What's up? Um, Joel Selwood, Jace is a big Cats fan. Um, through some some uh, mutual contacts, contact was made with Joel. Joel went around the whole footy club, put a bunch of videos together down at the Cats with some of Jace's favourite players. And then Jace's mate... Now, I wrote an article saying that Joel Selwood organised this and Jace will like this because Jace's uh, good mate, Andy Mathers, who is um, a prolific media man down in Geelong, actually. He had a lot to do with organising okay. all this. So he organised the jumper. He made, Joel signed it, and and Joel was the one to get all the videos done. But yeah. Andy, who's Jay, one of Jay's great mates, organised a lot of this. So it was a big shout so out. Was, was he salty? That? No, he wasn't salty. He's happy to have yeah. a little bit of mayo on the story that okay. Joel's. But anyway, so Andy, shout out. Yeah, he organised a jumper that said F U A M L, which is um, fuck you, acute myeloid leukemia. Joel Selwood signed it, number seven on the back. Yep which is Isaac Smith's number, goes on wins the Norm Smith medal. Huge. Actually a very good jumper right now. It's a yeah. one of a kind. Um, so that's all on the back of that. So acute myeloid leukemia, it's incre- incredibly aggressive and, and rare, as I, as I said. So basically, Jace uh, ran his own business. He um, was a plumber. He's got two kids, my uh, nephew and niece, uh, a wife at home. 
And from one day, he, he was, um, you know, had a week of being sick. Another week, couldn't out, get out of bed. Had some blood tests done. And effectively, got a phone call. So go to emergency um, right now. And mm. since that moment, um, you know, his business has shut down. Um, he's um, you know, getting some really well supported across both medical and financially. But um, it's been a complete uh, life change, and um, he's in the battle of his life. Um, and that's not uh, over overstepping what, yeah. what's actually going on. So to get out of the negativity, because I know my brother Jace and you know, us as a family are very positive in whole. Jace has got together with Life But Blood, which is a blood donation, uh, the, the blood donation service here in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, and um, blood is something that can't be uh, replicated. It can't be artificially, artificially built. Yep. Like you can't um, – like. You, you can't replicate it. It has to be the real stuff. And the only way to get blood is for people to donate blood. Yes. I didn't understand. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I, you see you donate to f like ads on yeah. radio and TV and that sort of stuff. Yep. I didn't know that that was the case, but it is. And yep. plasma especially. Yep. So Jace, in his case, he's effectively got to have his whole um, body cycled with with fresh blood. And, mm -hmm. and he's just had like this huge need for blood. And without people who donate, which is random people around the country – Jace would die and, sure. and, and Jace is one person and there are people all around the country that without donations from people yep. um, would die. It's not It's not like, a, oh, they just get sicker. They just wouldn't live. There would be no no way for them to survive. And so I've never donated blood. Have you ever donated blood? No, I actually haven't. Um, Charlie, you ever donated blood? No, I haven't. No. So, so I, I think I, I think blood donation is something that people know about but don't really understand. And like for me personally, it was never something that was on my radar because I've never had anyone affected about it in my life. Yeah, it's sort of for me always been one of those things. You're like, yeah, it'd be good to do that one time and just correct. And then you're like, oh, like I don't yeah. But it's something you can do and it regenerates. Like you can, while you're healthy, you can regenerate your own blood. So you can donate it, and it's not like it's gone forever. But yep. you can help people and you can save lives. And I've seen. Some of my you know, brother's close friends uh, do it because Jace has started a team, which I'm just getting to announcing. Um, and you get you get you get exactly where your blood goes. Like it tells you it goes to this state, this this city, uh, to this person, not by name, but this yeah. is what we've done with them, and this is how much you've helped. And that's cool. It's a, that's what you get out of it. So like, yeah. what do you get out of it? It's like you feel bloody good. Like you're, you're saving people's lives. Yep. So my brother Jace, he's got a cute like myeloid leukemia. He's fighting his ass off. But he has started this group that he's trying to get a thousand new blood donors um, in Australia under his name, which is Team Long Live Jace Nelson. So he's at three hundred. It's a pretty bloody That's good effort. Very good. Doesn't have social media, Jace. So he's just been. I don't know how he's been doing. It's been very impressive. But I said, right, enough's enough. Mm -hmm. I'm getting involved. Yeah. Because you know who I've got uh, over here in Perth. Got fucking legends that listen to this podcast yes. they can all donate blood mm -hmm. so i reckon we're at a thousand we're at, we're at 300 yep we, 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 we've said this a few times we know how many people listen to this mm -hmm. there's enough to fill the gap there i think we can get it to a thousand just from back chat totally it would mean a lot to me it would mean a lot to my family um off the back of the the afl side of things but this is a personal request here and this is inside uh fines which is the charitable or part of what we do here you can jump on. You can create an account. I've done it. I've just done it myself for the last couple of days. Okay. This, this is something that I'm asking without doing it myself. I reckon I'm going to do this next week. Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to get yeah, in I'll there do, do it. it. Yep. You want to come I'm down in. and do it with me? Yep. Great. My.donateblood.com.au and then you go through to creating an account. Yep. So create your own account and it's asking you for a team to join. you got to join Team Long Live Jace Nelson. So you have to have the team in there because we have a crowd. Have to write the, the word team. Yep. yep. So <laughs> team long live Jace Nelson on um, uh, on Lifeblood, which is donateblood.com.au. Just get over there. I reckon we can get to a thousand. Follow our socials, backchat double underscore. We're going to have a step-by-step -step guide yep. on how to do this. Great. I reckon the Backchat crew can. I reckon we can get around this. I think there'll be a lot of people out there, like like me and like you, like you as I'm well, right, yeah. who just you've, you've always said like, yeah, like you hear the ads, you're like, yeah, I should just do that. It's like it doesn't take like that, that long. Yeah, it would help from, a lot of people. From from everyone that I've heard do it, they went in with not a great deal of expectation about. Oh, I'm just going to donate some blood. Yeah, and they came out, and the information you get post that, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, keen in. So that's a part of what we're doing for the charity side of Backchat. We're going to build that. I'm going to do that. Let's get into fines though, hey? Let's do it. 
Finds in session. This is where you get to find whoever you bloody want. And I think there's some good ones this week. Name, Tom K. Finds himself, Backchat or Margaret River Roasting Co. We're getting into this one? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So our good friends at Margaret River Roasting Co. Legends. I Coffee. went down there. I, I, I went. I went down south. I, I'm going this way. I'm going this way. Yeah, pop in. They're I'm all legends. Go in. Absolutely, yep. they are. Well, we can just you be the judge who go. Oh, okay. oh, Four dollars. I'm the jury. You're the judge. Four dollars fifty. Went down to south of. Uh, went south. Where did I? I'll start again. Yeah. Went down south to Busso for the long weekend and stopped in at Margaret River Roasting for uh, for some coffees. Right. Great. Got some lovely um, coffees and picked up some pods as well. We appreciate you supporting our sponsors. Whilst we were there I, um, and we're about to pay, I told my wife to mention the Back Chat podcast to see if we could get a little discount on the pods. Mm-hmm. I mean, for so, should I just read this whole thing? Or read it I out. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's fine. To my complete shock, this was met by blank stares at the, to the guy at the front counter saying, never heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> he checked in with the work group chat and they didn't respond. So tell me, boys, who gets the fine here? Did I fuck something up? Did the fellow on the front counter have a brain fade? Or does back chat have some explaining to do? Help, please, Dan. Okay. Well, we're in the clear. And we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we haven't been lying to everyone about us having a relationship with Margaret Roasting. Like, no. so let's just, and there's discount codes over at Patreon. There is, right? So let's just, let's just squash that. Yeah. We haven't been lying. We do have a relationship with them. Yes. Okay. We do exist. Um, there is... Something. Well, I don't know. What, what else do you want me to say? Like, usually we're not allowed so to respond to these. Well, it's not our fault. Okay. No, we can. No, no, no. I'm asking for your. Okay. I, I can it's not chime our in. fault. So it's either I, his fault or Margaret River Roasting Co. They are really. I reckon. Um, well, it's actually personally, it's it's asked for the guy on the front counter. <laughs> I reckon we got to find the guy on the front counter. You know what? No, let's find James. I know James at Margaret River Roasting Co. You and I both know James. Yeah. A great fella. We're finding you, James. James, we're coming for you, mate. $4.50. We'll cover you this time. Yeah. Then next time <laughs> someone come comes to the front chat. counter and wants free coffee. <laughs> I mean, we can't. We're not. Okay. No, if you want discounts, join Patreon. There, yeah. there's discounts. There. there is dis- discounts code there. But he could have said, like, oh, we love back chat. Um, unfortunately, like, you know. Yeah. So, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll try a dollar fine for the guy on the front counter. Yeah. I mean, mate, it's back chat. How do you not know that? <laughs> Matthew Moyle uh, finds Dan. I already like it. For some reason I just like this. Um, Dan. Danger, this is a quotation marks. Dangerfield doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that's very fast. Not only is he a, is he a premiership player, Dan, he is a back-to-back-to-back to back to back grand final sprint winner. Turn it up. $5 in the piggy bet, you flog. <laughs> it doesn't say flog. <laughs> I, no, you know what? We don't get to respond, but I'm chiming please, in. Please, please respond. I didn't say he's not a fast runner. Mate, it's quotation marks. Yeah. He doesn't strike you so as someone who's very it. fast. It doesn't say- oh, Are you struck now, runner. dickhead? He's gone back-to-back. <laughs> to he doesn't look like the sort of guy- Order, that fast. order. <laughs> Order double fine ten dollars. That's oh, shit house behaviour, my man. You don't. I say you don't get to defend for that exact reason. That you don't get to argue that. That's what you've said. No, nothing, nothing else. Charlie, agree? Thank you. Shut up, Darcy. Who <laughs> gets the fine? We're getting out of order here. Andrew Bradley from uh, former Glenelg Sandford captain. Okay, <laughs> we're talking three dollars fifty on a lad's trip to listen out in Melbourne. We all stayed in a hotel in St Kilda. Andrew overindulged himself throughout the day slash night and decided to head home back to our hotel room at two a.m. That's not bad. Yeah. He climbed into bed and suddenly woke up to. <laughs> I haven't read this till now. To an entire Chinese family screaming at him with shock and horror. In utter confusion, Andrew raced out of the room and walked to reception. The man on the reception desk just laughed at Andrew and led him into our room. What room wow. was he in? Oh, that's funny. Great. <laughs> find, find a buck for, to the family for not locking your door. Yeah, correct. Darcy, well done. Andrew, $3.50. Thank you very much. Uh, this is from the Fines Master Apprentice. Hello. Big Kev gets a $2.50 fine. Just a simple one this week, but costly for Big Kev. Accidentally parked in a disabled spot in the city. Thought he could charm his way out of the $500 fine by calling up but they just said they'll see him in court. <laughs> I think it might be time for a new pair of glasses, Big Kev. I do enjoy the Big Kevs. Uh, Blake fines $5 both to Dan and Will for not asking the most important social media question since the Dunkley episode. How do people like their eggs? Just poor form. Also, how do you like your eggs, boys? Uh, 65 degree eggs probably for me. Best. What? Thank you, Charlie. Slow cook, a slow cooked egg. Oh, come you on. Can't wait. What's wrong with saying a slow cooked egg? Because <laughs> it's not as fancy. A 65 <laughs> degree <laughs> 
We've lost a plot here today. <laughs> What's your favourite? You're a loser. <laughs> fried egg. What's a fried egg? Like, like sunny side up? So we're talking yeah, about? sunny side up, yeah. Yeah, I don't like that either, Charlie. Just a scrambled, you're a scrambled No, I love you're scrambled eggs. You're, you're a scrambled <laughs> freak. What? I love scrambled eggs. 65 degree egg, I tell you. What does that mean? What does that mean? So, what, 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 all right, so are you, you trying to... You worked in a cafe, have you? <laughs> so you, um, when you boil an egg, you put it in boiling water, right? Which is 100 degrees. With a slow cooked egg, you put the water, you like you keep the water consistent at a sixty five degree Does temp. It cook and it slow cooks, and they're incredible. It's like a better version than poached. It's very. It good. makes me it's like gag reflex, like you talking about that. <laughs> All right, this is the last one from Nicole Livingston. Um, I thought she might be busy, bit busy this time of year. Um, hello, Nicole. Uh, this is from her email, CEO at aflw.com.au. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. I'm sure she's a big listener of back chat. All right, Will and Dan get a five dollar fine. I haven't read this yet, but thank you, Nicole. In a recent episode when discussing the end of the footy season, Dan and Will mentioned many other sports that could be discussed in the coming weeks. AFLW was not one of them. I understand this isn't just a footy podcast, but as a sports podcast by sports journalists, which is, I would, I would, I would challenge that. Well, I would still challenge it. It's selective and gender biased to not include the women's league of our golden sport or mention any women's sports at all. I think you'll find you have a significant and captive female audience who'd also like to hear about sports that just aren't the men's teams. On behalf of the AFLW and women in sport, please do better. Thank you, Nicole. She did She did go XOXO, Nicole, so there's a bit of love at the end. Thank you, Nicole. Um, I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to defend myself. Uh, yeah, I'll take the $5 fine. You know I want to defend myself badly there. But You'll get fined worse. if you Five dollars. Thanks, Nicole. I appreciate you being back to work, please. You're the CEO of the AFLW. <laughs> yeah. Get out. Get out of back chat. That's it. Done. I think it's been a bit of a long episode, but there's a reason. We've got Daniel Ricciardo this week on the show. No, we don't. We don't have Daniel Ricciardo. Don't worry about Daniel Ricciardo. We've got Jack fucking Redden. We've got Jack Redden. How good's that? Daniel Ricciardo. <laughs> yes, see you later, see mate. See you later. Jack Redden retires. We sit down with Jack Redden yep. for a big chat about his life in football and life after football. I'm actually as excited about this yeah. for a very long time. In interviews, we're done. Yeah. Um, Ricardo is next week. Unless nah. someone else crazy retires, we might. We'll see what Shannon again. Hearns doing, maybe. Is he retiring? Who knows? I didn't think oh. Redden was going to retire either. You know what to do. Follow us on back chat. Charlie, did you have fun, mate? Did you have fun? It was good having you back, Great mate. Great to be back. You've only had one beer. I'm disappointed. No, he's had two. two. This is my second. <laughs> don't tell his mum. Okay, very good. Back chat double underscore on socials. It's been good to have you back, Charlie. It's good to have you in the seat. I think you're going to be here tomorrow for Reddo as well, so. Yeah, I think so. Very good. Make sure you're West. <laughs> Charlie. Mate, make sure, what? I love Charlie. Like, Charlie, can you confirm something? You're like, yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> Just I can't. Hi, right. Jack, hi Jack Red. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Shepherd. Uh, we've lost it. See you later. Patreon. Our supporters, our sponsors. I've got to mention them. They're fucking unreal. Whippersnapper, Blue Bet, uh, Mo River Roasting Co., Shelter, Leadable Cameras, and Dean Bradley. You're all bloody legends. Backchatpodcast.com.au. Go to the Southern River Band. <laughs> <laughs>